What's up, 8th grade? Mr. Agnos here. This is the first video I'll be making wearing my new blue light blocking glasses to help with the eye pain from staring at so much screens every day. All right, so last week we started um, exploring this idea of a proportional relationship. And a proportional relationship is when we have, we're measuring two things and there's a constant, there's always a constant scale factor between the two things that we were measuring. And so one of the examples that I talked about was touchdowns and the number of points that you score. So before I get to this graph right here, let's just talk about touchdowns. I'll say TDs, right? And we know that if you score zero touchdowns, you get zero points. If you score one touchdown, you get six points. Remember, the, the extra point is something separate. If you score two touchdowns, you get 12 points, three touchdowns, 18 points, four touchdowns, 24 points, and so on. These little dots mean and so on. So it turns out we can actually write an equation that, that models this situation. I need some variables, and I'll make x um, touchdowns, and I'll make y the total points right the amount of total points that I earn or I get and notice how whatever um, my value on the left here is I multiply it by 6 and it gives me the value on the right <clears throat> so in other words if this left hand column are my x values I multiply it by 6 and that gives me the y value so I can write that as, hey, the total points I earn is equal to 6 times the number of touchdowns, right? This is my points. This is how many points I get per touchdown, right? This is per TD. And this last part is the number of touchdowns, right? Number of touchdowns. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at different situations, and we're just going to be writing an equation. And all the equations are going to be in this format. <clears throat> we call it, uh, in general terms, we, we call it y equals mx, right? Where x and y are the two things that we're measuring, right? Whether it's touchdowns and points, um, <clears throat> how many dozens of something we have, and the number of donuts. I think that was another example that I used. Um, and what we need to figure out is this number right here right the scale factor and in my touchdown example it is um, six so let's do some examples and hopefully it'll start to make sense by the time we've we've finished a few all right the graph shows the distance d a train travels uh, in time t at a constant speed r uh, we're going to write an equation uh, that models the situation shown below so I'm measuring two things here. I know we have three things, um, but we have two things on our graph here. We have time and distance. And notice that time is the x and distance is the y. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little table. And I'm going to say x, right, which in this case is measured in hours. Right. So I'll say hours for x. And that goes on one side of my table. And then y is going to be the distance, and that goes on the other side of my table. So let's go ahead and read this graph and just complete a table. And by looking at the table, we'll be able to figure out what our scale factor is. So when x is 0, that means I'm at this point right here. Well, then y is also 0, right? If I, if I haven't traveled anywhere, if I've traveled for 0 hours and I've gone 0 distance. When I go to 1, so I go to 1 hour, I go start here, I go up, I hit the line, and I go over, we can see that we've gone 100 miles. Wow, we are traveling fast. So in 1 hour, we've gone 100 miles. Oh, we're on a train, that's why. All right, in 2 hours, I can go up to my graph, I hit the line right here. I go over and we've gone 200 miles. So in two hours, we've gone 200 miles. And I'm gonna do one more, but I think you guys can see pretty clearly what my scale factor is gonna be in this case. In three hours, 
I go up to my graph, I go over, and we've gone 300 miles. So notice that in this case, whatever my x coordinate is, which is the number of hours, I multiply it by 100, and that gives me the total distance. So I can write that equation as the total distance, which is y, is equal to 100 times the number of hours. Right? So there is the equation that will model this situation right here. And equations are really useful because this graph only goes up to four hours. What if I told you, yeah, we're, we're on a train here. Some people take trains for like two days if you're going across the country. So what if I said, hey, um, we're going to be on the train for 24 hours. How many miles can we cover? Well, that's a piece of cake. You just take 24, right, and you plug it in for X right here. So you would multiply 24 hours times 100, right, and you would get 2,400. All right, let's look at let's look at a second example. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, it says a hamburger made with a certain type of beef loses one quarter of its weight while cooking. All right, so when you cook a burger, whether it's frozen or just raw, right, and you put it on the grill or on the stove, right? All kinds of juices and fat, they, they run off, right? They get cooked off. And so the burger actually loses weight um, as it is cooking, which is ironic because you will not lose weight if you eat too many burgers. So when you like, go to McDonald's and you order a quarter pounder, if you read the fine print, it says, hey, that burger weighed a quarter pound before you it was cooked. And after it's cooked, it actually weighs less than that. So we got a burger. I can't do this problem without actually drawing a burger. All right, there is, there's my bun. And then in here, we got patty. We got some cheese. All right, here's some cheese. We got some lettuce. And maybe we got some tomatoes. All right. So, and there's some tomatoes. There's my burger. And it says, <clears throat> write an equation that models the weight of a cooked hamburger Y based on the weight of the uncooked burger X. Okay. So, X is equal to uncooked. All right. They tell us that right here. And y is equal to cooked, cooked hamburger y. So y is equal to cooked. So a lot of students are going to want to do something like this. They're going to say, okay, well, y is equal to 1 fourth x, right? Be careful. It loses, it loses 1 fourth of its weight. So how much of its weight is remaining? If I have a hole, if I have a pizza, and I take away one-fourth of it, I have three-fourths left. Right? In other words, one hole minus one-fourth is equal to three-fourths. So when I go to write an equation here, a cooked burger right? Why? This is my cooked burger. Is always going to be equal to three-fourths. Oops. Is always going to be equal to three-fourths the size of the uncooked burger. So this is the uncooked. So if I take the uncooked burger, I multiply it by three-fourths, right? That'll give me 
That'll give me three fourths. That will equal the weight of the cooked burger. So be careful with these fraction ones, right? If it says it loses an eighth or it loses a fifth, well, that means you have seven eighths left or four fifths left. So our situation here, our equation would be y equals three fourths x. Right, the uncooked burger is always three fourths of the original cooked burger's weight because we lose, we lose the one quarter. All right, let's go over one last problem. Again, as I watch these videos, they're, they're not supposed to answer every single question you're going to have. Um, the idea is that hey, this is an introduction, and that you come to class and you ask lots of questions, or you you can even ask questions about what happened here in in the video. And I'll go over. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. In this situation, we're actually comparing two things. It says the number of miles y a car travels in x hours can be modeled by the equation y equals 65x. So we have a car, right, where x is equal to hours and y is equal to the number of miles. And for the car, they tell us, hey, the total number of miles is equal to 65 times the number of hours. What that is telling us is that the car is traveling 65 miles per hour, right? If the number of hours was 1, we would have traveled 65 miles. If the number of hours was 2, we would have traveled 130 miles, uh, and so on. So now they give us this graph that represents a train. And they want us to figure out from the graph, hey, is the train going faster or slower than the car? So I need to write an equation and figure out, well, what, what is this number for the train? So we can do that exactly the same way as we did before. Um, I'm going to make a little xy table where x is hours, all right, because it's on the x-axis down here. And y is the distance because it is on the y-axis right here. And once again, if I go zero miles, or if I, sorry, if the train travels for zero hours, it's going to go zero miles. If the train travels for one hour, right, I start at one, I go up, I hit my line, I go over, we see that it traveled 75 miles. So right away, I think we have our answer, but let's just keep going. If the train travels for two hours, I go up to my line. It hits the graph right here. And I've gone 150. And we can probably stop right here. Notice that whatever my x value is, is being multiplied by 75, right? I take the x value, I multiply it by 75, and that's going to give me the y value. So for my train... The equation is going to be the total distance is equal to 75 times the number of hours. So this 75 right here translates to 75 miles per hour. And we can literally see that on the graph right here. Right, Miles per hour means miles per one hour. Well, in one hour, our train traveled 75 miles. So even though for this problem they give us a graph for the train and they gave us uh, an equation for the car, we were still able to, to read the two and compare and figure out which one was going faster. Okay, so this video is an introduction to writing equations for proportional relationships. I think you guys will see once you, once you get a few under your belt, it's not that big a deal. Make sure you ask questions in class, and I'll talk to you guys soon.